Hi everyone, so this is the first bit for the second lesson of discrete random variables. It might be that we do both of these lessons in one, because there wasn't that much in the previous lesson. But as it stands at the moment, this is lesson two. So it says, it's just kind of as a reminder, it says individual probabilities between 0 and 1, and the sum is always 1. So the sum of the probability that x is equal to x is equal to 1. And I'm going to use this fact to find out part 1. Because if you look, this one's not working very well. I can use the sum of that. If I add all of these up, then they equal 1 to my advantage. So the sum of the probability that x is equal to x is 1. So 0 0.1 plus 0 0.15 plus 0 0.45 plus p is equal to 1. So if I add that together, that's 0 0.7 plus p is 1. So p must be 0 0.3. So my p is 0 0.3. From then on, slowly can pick it up, the probability that x is greater than or equal to 3. So the probability that x is greater than or equal to 3 is these here. So it's the 0 0.45 plus the 0 0.3. So it's 0 0.75. So that's the probability that x is greater than or equal to 3. And they're quite nice, these questions, aren't they? You know, not much to them, <laughs> but you're always very nice. All right, let's have a look at the next one then. So there's a question for you, so can you do that? So you actually create an equation and solve it as a quadratic. So we can't have negatives, so it must be 0 0.2. So I'd write here as k is greater than 0, k is equal to 0 0.3. So that's a 0 0.2, and that's a 0 0.2 squared, not quite 0 0.4. So less than or equal to 20, is them. Yeah. Uh, right, keep going then. So example two. <coughs> so it's given us an equation to create the values for. So if I draw a little picture, so I'll load in a second. So if, if z is one, it's c lots of one squared, which is c. If z is two, it's c lots of 2 squared, so 40. If z is 3, c lots of 3 squared, so 90. And z is 4, c lots of 4 squared, 16c. So I can draw a table. So I've got my z values, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And my probability that z is z is going to be C, 4C, 9C, and 16C. So I know, so for part one, I'm going to find out C. But I know that if I add up all my probabilities, Z is equal to Z, then that's going to be equal to 1. So how many Zs have I got here then? So I've got 30Z, 30C, sorry. Yeah. So 30 lots of C is 1. So C is 1 over 30. So I know, really, these probabilities are 1 over 30, 4 over 30, 9 over 30, and 16 over 30, for C is 1 over 30. Then part 2, let's change it back. So part 2 says, probability that Z is greater than or equal to 3. So that's going to be the 9 over 30 plus the 16 over 30 is 25 over 30, which is 5, 6. There. There you go. That's not too bad, is it? Right, one for you to have a go at. So work out what your values are first by subbing in your x values and then use the fact that the probability is equal to 1. There. So they've worked it out that if k is 1, it's 2k, then 3k, then 4k, then 5k. Add them all up, gives me k value of 1 over 14. And then I've made the, made the table and we've done that. So that's not too bad, is it? 
I'd say. Uh, is that right? Example three then. So example three says a discrete random variable has a probability of distribution. Given that x equals 3 is 0 0.25, find the values. Right then. So if I use the probability that x is 3 is 0 0.25, I know that a lots of 3 plus b is 0 0.25. So 3a plus b is 0 0.25. So that's one fact that I know. I also know that the sum of the probabilities is 1. So if I had the, for, so I'm going to keep that there. So the probability that x is 1 will be a plus b. For the probability that x is 2 is 2a two plus b. The probability that x is 3 is 3a three plus b. You know what? I'm just off the probability that x is 0, which is just b. And then the probability that x is 4 is 4a plus b. If I sum them all together, it's all equal to 1. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, I've got 5 b's, and I've got 4, 7, 9, 10 a's, and that's equal to 1. <coughs> So if I solve simultaneously, 3a plus b is a quarter, and 10a plus b is 1, then that would give me, if I solve them simultaneously, it gives me a is 0 0.05 and b is 0.1. So that's quite nice, isn't it? I don't even draw the table. I could draw the table, but I've worked it out there. I just forgot my zero then, didn't I? Uh, so Terence owns a local shop. The shop has free checkouts, at least one is which is always staffed. Regular customers observe the probability distribution for the, num for the number of checkouts. Right. So I've got a certain way of working out probabilities for one and two, and then another way of working it out for three. So for the probability that n is one, it's going to be three quarters times by a quarter to the power of 1 minus 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0, anything to the power 0 is 1, so that's going to be 3 quarters. For n equals 2, it'll be 3 quarters times a quarter to the power of 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1, so I've got 3 quarters times a quarter, it's 3 over 16. And then for n is 3, it's a different equation, so it's just k. Now I know that the sum of my probabilities for n equals n is 1. So 3 quarters plus 3 sixteenths plus k is equal to 1. And I've got the calculator, so I'm just going to use a completed pack. Uh, so if I do the rearrange, I'm going to end up with k is 1 sixteenth there. In terms of a table, there's my n, so probably say n is n. So I've got 1, which is 3 quarters. I've got 2, 3 sixteenths. And then 3, which was said was k originally, but actually is 1 over 16. There. So that's that. So find the probability that a customer visiting Terrace's shop during sprint will find at least 2 open. So the probability that n is greater than or equal to 2 must be the 3 sixteenths plus the 1 sixteenths. 4 sixteenths is a quarter. Job, job. Okay. I'm on nine minutes. I've done loads of that already, so I'm just going to stop because I've got one more example left to do. <laughs> Next is